All right. Welcome to the stream, everybody. settings on the game real quick made some adjustments to maybe make the stream run a little bit better be less less choppy but we'll see we'll see Just updated my computer, so it might be a little jank for a little bit, but we'll see. Okay. I'm not sure if my mic's coming through all right. All right. So let's take a look where we were last time. Last time, uh, I started working on this kind of underground segment. And for those of you who didn't make it to the last stream, we started integrating um, some stuff for uh, just some general integration to the uh, other level. So this level is in an underground dungeon. Excuse me. Got like allergies right now. Uh, much better. Um, but yeah, this this level right here is kind of a extension of an already existing level, right? So let me actually crank up the resolution. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So this level sits under what is going to essentially be our dev hub world. Um, well, not really our hub world, uh, more so just like a sandbox environment that uh, the player can run around and do a bunch of different stuff in. I'm trying to remember what I was gonna do last. Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> got this open here. <coughs> so this is something I kind of pulled from our our old Unity build of Mixspace 5th. This was like a, kind of like a firefight level I was working on at one point. Obviously, it's not textured or anything right now, but it was looking kind of cool in terms of just like, general 
general space. Kind of neat. A little bit of a blast from the past for me, because this map is just over a year old. Never ended up doing anything with it. I might come back and, you know, make an actual Unreal version of this map. But, um... Yeah, our entire pipeline was completely different when we were working on this. This was uh, back when I was essentially sculpting the entire level in uh, Blender. And then, you know, assigning all the materials in there and then uh, pulling it over into Unity. But now, we have the Unreal Landscape feature and, um, you know, you can get super, super detailed with that using things like alpha masks and, um, you know, height maps and tessellation and all that good stuff. So, let me... Let me know if the stream's too loud or too quiet. I know um, it was like messing with my drivers and stuff. I'm not sure why. Oh, this is a... Sorry, I'm, I'm working off screen. Let's get this rolling. Rolling, 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 rolling. Rolling, rolling. I think. Right, I was gonna build like a little outcropping here. Yeah, I've always been a really big fan of like kind of integrating um, like natural environments with uh, man-made. I always just think the aesthetics like really, really cool. So that is what I'm going to do here. Um, hmm. Mm -mm -mm. That's probably about right. 
See, the thing is, like, when you integrate natural stuff with man-made, you don't want it to, like, cut in super hard like this. Because, like, this doesn't make sense. It would kind of make sense to have, like, a wall jutting out of this rock here, but not nearly as much um, through the stairs itself, right? Because that would be, like, a tripping hazard. That doesn't make, like, a lot of sense, like, design-wise. So we're going to just all of this right here Do like a, like a corner piece Oop, that is not the one I'm looking for this is what I'm looking for I don't know if I want See, because yeah, this would this would go in a little bit more. Cause that's like no one would no one would be walking on something like that, right? That's too dangerous. I do think it is kind of fun sometimes to have something that doesn't really make sense uh, in terms of like level design, like something that is just like completely uh, unsafe and just is you know stupid. But uh, if you're designing like a man-made level. Uh, generally you want it to have like a little bit of like I don't know reasonable design right because if you want a space to be convincing of like someone like actually uses this and occupies this area you want to kind of design things in the same uh, way you know you would want to design something in real life hey what's up Welcome to the stream. It just needs some good railings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, do, it does need some good railings. Um, yeah, I mean, we have the the blueprint for extendable railings. So, honestly, one of these days, uh, either Will and I or I should uh, kind of sit down to make some, you know, accessory stuff. But again, uh, like I've said before, a lot of what we're doing with these level designs right now is just like super, super simple stuff, just blocking in things really, really quick. Um, and, you know, we're gonna go back and kind of like set dress it later, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't like this, I think. Oh, so we need something like pillars and like support beams and that kind of stuff because this would not i mean like you could do something like this but it's i don't know structurally unsound um, i will say the one advantage of um when i was working in blender and like pulling in all these rocks and like scaling them and stuff if I wanted to like cut into an area like this and I liked the design of this I could just use a boolean right just a boolean modifier and just boom square right through there but overall our current uh level design setup is is worth the drawbacks because the iteration is just so so much faster cleaner and just I mean, kind of all around better, but you'll get those like little things that you miss every now and then. Kind of the same difference between like uh, using Maya and Blender. Like I've been a big fan of Blender for the longest time because that's what I started with. Because, you know, back when I started game development, I didn't have any money. And uh, Blender was still fairly new and a little jank at the time. Um, but, you know, it's free, so. I'm going to use this ceiling piece. I need to turn this corner snap on right here. Yeah, there we go. To be honest, I probably could have just used a, used a square, but. Um, four panels. 
Now we want roof panel and then trim. I would want you to like kind of cut back into here because I don't want I'm not going to build like a whole room here but it is kind of weird if there's not like a little jut in some things a lot of levels will do is you know even if there isn't like a playable space here they'll put like a little alcove and then like a door or something for like flavor um, so I think I might Scooch this over. See, I really like that there, but then this is cutting up. So maybe we just squash it just a little bit. Then rotate it so it's like sticking out of the room. There we go. That's not looking bad. And I'll dupe it and then do a little rotation. It seems for level building, source engines, hammer editor is pretty legit. I've seen people basically modeling everything in the engine itself. Yeah, it's it's kind of really, really powerful. Um, and especially with source two coming out, um, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, there, there's some other limitations with the Source Engine, but um, yeah, I mean, think about like all the different levels like people made for like Team Fortress and Left 4 Dead and all that just over the course of the years. I mean, it's one of the most modded engines probably ever. So it, it really does do some crazy stuff. Um, yeah, I think it does actually have like a, like an editing system, uh, for like meshes and stuff, which to be fair, um, Unreal kind of has that too. I just don't, I don't like using your system, right? Cause it's just one more thing I have to go back and like update. Um, yeah, so it just made more sense for us to like build this snap kit out. Hmm. Seems to be scaled up. The tiling doesn't match everything else. Actually, you know what? It doesn't matter if it cuts the ceiling because. I am going to cover the ceiling at some point. This bit needs to be sloped up a little bit. Because right now it's like the general feel of this area is like pushing back at you. Yo, welcome to the stream, Sim Cook. You're gonna be on for the rest of the stream around nine. Can't wait. Yeah, man, it's good to have you. Uh, yeah, dip off if you need to. I mean, we're just gonna be hanging out for a couple hours, just just talking about whatever, just game design, game dev, you know, state of the uh, games industry, life in general. Uh, and mostly just me yapping to myself about level design. Always looking for feedback from everyone else though, because uh, sometimes you get your your head too close to it, and you you kind of lose sight of like what looks interesting, right? I'm especially guilty of that, where I'll just be sitting there moving like one little asset back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to make it look perfect. And then, you know, forgetting, oh yeah, there's a whole other level to make. So, you guys keep me honest about that. You'll be back on shortly. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I, I need your feedback. 
as much as I like to pretend I know what I'm doing, uh, it is it is always nice to get uh, a little bit of feedback from from everyone else because I'm not going to be the only one playing this game. So yeah, see you when you get back. Good to have you here. Always a pleasure, man. <clears throat> it's like, I want a general slope up to this area. My problem is it doesn't, there's not like a, enough of a flat space and the way the corner's jutting, um, a lot of, a lot of energy pointing to this and it's not going anywhere right so we'll probably want to pull this piece up a little bit and then that way there'd be a little bit more space and I can probably do like a corner there yeah, if I did something like whoop, turn my snap on I think I'm going to turn the cell snap off for this, just not eyeball it, but you know, do that where it's like a smaller corner. That's a little bit better. I, I think that's a little bit better. That said, this I think still needs to... This way a bit, right? Ignore that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that a little bit. Um, there we go. Did I make a quarter piece? Oh my gosh! I can't believe I actually saved myself the trouble. Look at that. Planning for the future. Uh, would it be there? Yes, it would be. Cool. Love that. Ah, right. These pieces need to be adjusted at some point. <laughs> Um, nice reminder to come back and fix it, but for now it's, it's going to bug me. So I'm just going to take it off the grid, take it off the cell snap and just do like a smidge movement. So it's no longer sea fighting. Yeah. Cause this, this texture is all wrong anyway. So this piece needs to be swapped out. So actually, um, the ramp is correct. It's this like little quarter piece that's like giving me trouble. Yeah, that's gross looking. Let's do this. And then, boom. A reminder to myself to make a new snap kit piece for that. Okay. The ceiling might be too high. Yeah, because what I wanted to do was I wanted to have it snap back. That might be a bit too confusing for the player because this is kind of implying it's going to cut through here. I don't know. This is a kind of figure it out as we go situation. This needs to go back down low. There we go. 
Landscape needs to pool up just a smidge. We'll readjust the rock here and just up a little bit. Actually, no, I'll leave that one there and make some new ones. Also on our final pass, what I'll do is I'll uh, texture all this sand a little bit differently to kind of guide the player's eyes a little bit better. just for scale here because it's very easy to forget like the general size of everything right give him like a little, little block to stand on ah see that's that I brought him in there because I didn't realize like this was so high up already. See, that's kind of bad uh, pushing into a room and it's just all fighting uphill. I kind of wanted this to be more like a, a flat arena. I'm fine with there being like an initial slope, but I kind of want it to level out because fighting uphill just feels kind of bad. Unless it's like you know, that's the intention. Like, you want to be fighting uphill. But I don't want the uh, engagements down here to be particularly difficult, right? And if they can see you before you can see them, that's it's going to get your ankles shot off. Mm -mm -mm. So... I think actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut that out right there. We need like our little floor half piece. Uh, nope. There we go. I'm gonna snap this around. And just you know, put him over here on it. snap off snap that there and <coughs> excuse me Just kind of large. That's... Yeah. Mm. That's right. They're uh, not as long as they are tall. You know what? I'll just bring one of these out. Take the snow snap off. Bring it right down there. Wait. Oh, yeah.
Interesting. Okay, so this actually would be more like right there then. Hmm. Yeah, I never did taper in those barricades. Okay, so that's the right height. Well, in this instance, since I'm not using the snap grid, I can kind of break it. Okay, yeah, that's looking correct. This just needs... Uh, like, wall panel D, maybe? Yeah, that's probably fine. Bring this ramp over here. Oop. What? There we go. That's what I want. Since I haven't baked the nav mesh in this area, he can't actually touch me. That's funny. Well, unless I go up here. Punch me. Excuse me. Very rude. Trying to test my level, thank you. Uh, are we going to have any grab lifts in this level? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're, we're gonna have some grab lifts, dude. Yeah, I'm thinking what we're going to do is uh, probably have uh, what are essentially just like air vents, either jutting you across the level or um, upwards. Yeah, so this is uh, this is one of our grab lifts. It's uh, kind of based off of the uh, man cannons from Halo. Um, I built it out to where this arrow kind of controls the direction of the trajectory so you can visually see in the game engine like you know where it's gonna go um, I can't remember if I made it easy to adjust the force I think you have to like open the blueprint itself so that's something I gotta definitely gonna work on at some point or yeah yeah they're not exposed to variables oh well what are you looking at? boom <laughs> that's always fun These actually function probably uh, more similarly to uh, launch pads in Fortnite than anything else. Very weird that like the player moving is so choppy. I wonder if that's just like thick intervals on like updating. Probably something to do with like how the game's set up for multiplayer. I don't remember. What am I doing? <laughs> Get back. But yeah, we're definitely gonna have some some gravity lifts in this level. Uh, let's see. Do. Can't remember if this has proper anything on it. Probably not. Okay, that one has proper UVs. We'll use this one then. Probably more correct.
I always thought the phrase more correct is like kind of funny because it's because <laughs> something's either correct or it isn't right uh, so saying something is more correct is just wrong it is that is I don't know I guess you know it's it's closer to being correct but it just seems like sloppy English to me which I'm from Florida so I'm all about sloppy English like this if this was maybe higher no then it's not like protective right uh, I, I just don't like that empty bit right there you know what this is this is what we'll do well all right that's on the cell snap that, that, this, and that, and then, can I actually run out of that? That might be a problem. Alright, we're gonna move him over here for a second. Oh yeah, I can move out of that, that's, oh that's like perfect. It's like perfect jump height too. Wow, look at that. Can't get up under it. Ah, oh, yeah, you can't get up under it. Oops. I need to put another wall. <coughs> Excuse me. So, will this slope work? I want to say it will. I designed it to. Can't remember if it will though. What? What's wrong with the? I guess I didn't turn it all the way. Ah, uh, yeah, it's not the same slope angle. That, okay, yeah, that makes sense, because this is like an intense slope, and that's a 45. Oh, this is... Is this on a snap? This is on a snap. So that means... What? What was going on there? Okay, well that was weird. Oh, you know what? It was probably sticking out because I had to rotate it wrong, not because it was off the grid. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, cool piece. He said it's back to 15, so I don't gunk up any more stuff. Um... Nope. Well, that's fine. I don't really care if you can like get up under there anyway. These need to be. There we go. And. In, make it match up. Yeah, this 
this mesh is like all wrong. It's not the right size. I need to go back through and like update them. Good enough for now, though. <laughs> I really should do something about this wood at some point. I don't know, how are y'all feeling about this like little little bunker thing right here? I think it's kind of neat, but maybe, maybe a bit much, I don't know. Yeah, so um, none of the level is going to be open, open. Is the open area going to be open? I can picture having a ceiling and spinning fan with like scenes sifting down through it. Yeah, so um, the entirety of this level is technically underground. Um, there's gonna be a, like a few instances where I wanna see like cracks, like looking up and having sunlight coming through. But for the most part, everything's going to be closed off, right? It's more like sand is like sifting through the walls and like the ceiling itself. So yeah, having like a ceiling fan and like like sand coming in through the ceiling would be like really really cool that's a good idea awesome yeah yeah i i kind of like that concept too it's just uh Kind of neat. Let's see. Uh, no. D. no, we want it. Uh, half one. Oop. I guess we do want the barricade one. Yeah. So they don't technically line up. It's a problem for another time anyway. How deep underground are we? Oh, we're we're deep deep, right? So I'm thinking at the beginning of this level, um, so essentially Captain Space Buff is going to like venture very shortly into the front of a facility. 
and then um, a trap door is gonna open and he's gonna just like shoot down you know something like 30 stories into a prisoner uh, containment area which you know I should probably start building that at some point over here um, but yeah you're you're like 20 30 stories down you're you're deep deep underground it's also like I'm thinking um, this space is kind of venting uh, like thermal and like steam energy so on like the top of the level in the in the other like hub world area uh where you first enter the level there's gonna be like pipes and stuff like running along the mountain like going to this like giant howitzer just like steam shooting out of them so i think the the core of this facility should be deep underground so we're we're gonna be we're gonna be pretty deep player going to be able to get back out if they decide they don't actually want to run the dungeon and would rather keep exploring hmm good question um i'm thinking there might be like a lift back to the top but um i do kind of want the player to like kind of commit to it right um I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I think like a better option would be like a it's like are you sure you want to like move on? Uh kind of similar to like how Metro uh Exodus did it where you know you spend all this time in this area and then once you're getting ready to move on, you know, you have an option to kind of like fiddle far around and stay in the same area. But uh, once you're gone, you're you're gone, right? Uh, just for the sake of this being like a demo, I want there to be like a a reason to like push someone forward, and um, you know, once you decide to play the dungeon portion, you know, you're in the you're in the end game of the uh, the demo. We'll see though. Do some play testing, get some feedback. But yeah, the uh, the idea of like Mix Space Piff kind of getting trapped in this level is kind of cool to me. Because then he has like extra reason to like fight his way out, right? If he can just kind of come and go, there's not as like much gravitas to it. It's not as urgent. I think I want this ceiling down just a smidge. breaks this part of the level off more. Then you could have an area up here. That makes this look a lot better too, I think. Mm, yeah, we'll just have to make sure it's not so hard that people get stuck. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, that's that's kind of something you want to do anyway right like you don't want to design uh, a level where people can't beat it so think of it like you know the overworld is going to have these kind of like more free form amorphous uh, kind of like mini levels like levels smacked into the world but uh, this is more like a typical dungeon, right? Like this is more akin to more like a Halo level, I think. I mean, it's a little more freeform, right? Like 
There's there's more options. But Do we not give this guy invincibility frames right now? That's something we gotta adjust. <clears throat> But yeah, um, the way I'm kind of designing this level almost is if we wanted to fire this level up on its own somewhere, someone could probably play this in like 20, 30 minutes, right? Uh, especially for something like, like a convention or uh, whatever, something that doesn't like lend itself as well to a, a long format playthrough. Um, you know, kind of building a small little like tight experience at the end, I think is a good way to like polish off a demo. The only potential issue is like the environment feeling kind of samey for a demo whereas like uh our other area has a lot of variety a lot of that is just going to come down to like building new materials and sprucing this up right like it's feeling samey right now because it's all gray box basically Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, each area can have something unique about it, like the fan in this area, the screens in the indoctrination area. Yeah, like each each room is kind of kind of have a little bit of its own theme, right? Like I'm thinking this is going to be like a computer bank room, and uh, especially if we like animate these like spinning and whirring and processing, uh, like this kind of has its own vibe, right? And probably what I'll do is, you know, change out the panels themselves uh, to have, you know, a different material in each zone. So you're, it's, it's very clear what part of the level you're in. Um, grubs on surgical tables. Yeah, yeah, that'd be super, super cool. Just, uh, yeah, and then just like rooms where... Uh, there's just like junk and parts and like a conveyor belt and like uh, destroyed moon bots and like moon bots and like tubes like ready to be like woken up I'm thinking there'll be like an area where there's like a, a crane trail you know just like holding moon bots like it's like a factory or whatever the reel to reels will spin that blinking light yeah yeah that'll be super dope such a i mean just such a good job making this i mean very very vibey very very classic <clears throat> i was mentioning the other day we need things like grates and stuff too to where you could like look through uh floors and ceilings into like kind of the next area like a good way to like tell you like hey there's some stuff above you or below you kind of give you uh more ideas of like where you are in a level uh in reference to everything else because the problem with interior dungeon type levels is they very very quickly turn into a maze uh, if you don't have any lines of sight on the rest of the level. So that's a great idea. Oh my gosh. Boo. <laughs> Boo. That's awful. <laughs> 
Yeah, pipes, pipes everywhere. Um, I think will be really, really good. Yeah, pipes, um, wires, grates, uh, tables, cabinets, uh, conveyor belts. Like a conveyor belt that you could use like a spline on, similar to how we use like the tracks. Uh, that'd be really, really cool. Or you could just kind of like drape it along the ground, wherever. But yeah, see like right here, I'm building a line of sight to uh, this area over here. I'm actually not gonna let the player go through this, right? But it gives you context of like where you are in the level. Start making a list, yeah. Yeah, we need a list of all the good stuff that we need for set dressing these levels. It's easy to forget just like how much stuff a level has in it. Hmm. At some point, I need to build a floor piece that's like cut in the middle to where you could have two different materials on each side. We talked about doing that very, very early on in development because um, funny enough, Fortnite does that where it'll be like concrete on one side and then like a wood floor on the other. Uh, we just haven't gone to the trouble of it. Nope. Green's kind of annoying. I know that's to like do the what do you call it? Uh anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering. It's weird that it's that same distance every time though. Oh well. That is a problem for a different day. I need to do something over here that kind of gives you a little more context. Um, mm -mm. Like half floor. In the middle.
Wait, that's actually not the middle of it. Uh, right, yeah, because it's the grid. Yeah, this this material is like all wrong. The tiling on it needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess look at that. It's essentially just a uh, normal floor scale down, which is sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. You don't want to do that. Hmm, <coughs> actually, no, I really don't like that. I don't like that bridge. Um, I think it would be better if you had to, like, skirt your way around. This is tricky. Out really what I want this whole area to be. So these should probably basically like meet in the middle there, right? We're going to copy this over here. So in reality, this is something you wouldn't be able to like go through because I'll put glass. <coughs> Excuse me. Problem is, there needs to be like more reason to go down this area than just like just to see the next area, right? So. Oh, interesting. Oh. Huh. Where did this corner wall come from? Right, right, right. That's from earlier. So that needs to get deleted. Um, I think we're going to do some half walls here. Kind of make like a little, almost like office room. Um. And really not make it go uh, anywhere. Cell snap off. Put that there. There. Right. The only problem is like I don't like it being off center. So really I need like a quarter wall, but that's it's not something I have at the moment. Hmm. Or do I? Ron. If it's not on the grid. Surprisingly not terrible. Ah, uh, there's some Z fighting them. Ah, I should have known better. Let's do this. Oops. Uh, wait, no. 
that was the right skill. Why did it move it? That's weird. Yeah, yeah like offset it. Whatever. Oh, you know what? I could just do. So like, this is such bad practice. <laughs> In reality, I should just like make a make something right, but this is a demo, and sometimes quick and dirty is good enough. Yeah, that looks fine. Excuse me. Yeah, 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 good point, good point. Just bash together whatever shapes or whatever we need and then you know you can always go back to the fine tooth comb make an asset to replacement and you know if you don't notice it again chances are it's probably just fine like i mean these are they're probably just fine to be honest uh but in the case of a lot of stuff we will actually need to go back and make a new asset Where's that wall half I was using earlier? Oh, it's right. No. There it is. Um, that's a little claustrophobic. You, <laughs> you have returned. Welcome back, I'm Sim Cook. Yeah, we're just uh figuring out a way to connect these two spaces right now visually. Um, we're so back. <laughs> yeah. So what I was, what I was saying earlier is, um, you know, one, one thing about designing, uh, interior spaces that are exclusively interior, it's very, very easy for them to kind of turn into a maze, right? Cause you don't have context for where you are in the level. Um, and you can you can do things to change that and we're going to do a lot of like set dressing and material changes and have like different themes for different rooms like you know an experimentation lab versus like a computer bay versus like uh an area where like sand is like coming in through like a fan or something but all that said it's still nice to occasionally have like a line of sight to another area right because it kind of gives you generalized context of where you are in the level so um, currently this like area here I'm trying to give a um, a visual look right I might even do something like that where you could like look down and definitely see that it's like a sandy area Yeah, this is a good chance to to brainstorm stuff that can like go in every area, right? Like we're always looking for like suggestions on like what's a cool idea for like a segment of a level, right? It's like, do you want to see a room full of like computer banks that are like stacked up to the ceiling? Do you want to see uh, an area where like you know grubs and wildlife are like being experimented on, and, you know, dissected, and they're like on tables? Do you want to see like a conveyor belt with like 
hundreds of moon bots like dangling from the ceiling ready to be deployed you know that kind of stuff okay I kind of I kind of like that where you can like see that it's a distinctly different area there <coughs> excuse me gonna be able to look back through there not bad not bad the cool thing is as we make more and more levels we'll have an increasingly large library of accent pieces so later levels will be easier to make it more interesting yeah 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 the more the more we develop levels um and the more just like props and stuff the faster it will go and uh the more variety we can have right and we can always take some of those pieces and kind of insert them back into a level right for like set dressing i kind of don't hate that design hmm Interesting. <clears throat> I am wondering if I should just pull the hallway all the way forward though. No, no, I like that because it frames that now. It's like it's funneling your attention forward and really kind of impressing the point of this is where you're supposed to go um, now this isn't as informative looking back this way right but at this point you're moving further into the level so you don't really need the context as much um, Generally, you just want to kind of hint at somewhere where the player is going to go. Not so much uh, where they've been, right? Here's what I'm thinking for pipes. It'll be a Houdini digital asset that takes a static mesh as input, generates pipes without writing the volume of that mesh. So you could just build it out of boxes and cover whole wall, make long groups of pipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be really, really good, right? Like you want something dynamic, um, you want something you can like kind of stretch everywhere and kind of build to fill the, f you know, general shape of the room. I'm so good. So when it comes to the sandy areas and that general sort of encroachment of the desert, I think of like a single big accident that occurred. Not sure if it's a natural disaster or something gone wrong with the Moonian's operations, but basically, once the desert was given just the slightest foothold, it's been impossible to completely fight back. It's just slowly taking over more and more of the facility, and it's like, nothing to see here on a side nail to a giant mat of sand. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Um, I was thinking something that could be kind of cool is, um, like, as you're in the level, you feel like these like tremors, right? And like sand will, and like dust will occasionally, uh, you know, shake in through the cracks and everything. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, I like the idea is that it's, uh, because this is an underground facility, it's like getting butted up against by like one of those giant sandworms. And, um, you know, because the Soviet Union is experimenting on all those like grubs that eventually, you know, turn into the giant sandworm. Um, you know, it's like hearing the screams of its like children. So it's trying to like shake the facility apart and it's, you know, slowly tearing it to pieces. Um, but yeah, like this, this facility has kind of been like half abandoned, right? Like, um... The Soviet Moonian hasn't really been uh, in full operation for a long while, right? Because uh, 
the planet American forces on this planet have more or less been squashed um, until you get here. So a lot of areas that, you know, there's just like sand pooling in, right? From like every direction. Just kind of in general disarray. But yeah, another reason uh, I'm putting these sandy areas in is because uh, Will is building out the grub right now. And, you know, it would make sense for grubs to be able to like burrow up from these sandy bits. And you can now have a reason to fight grubs in this facility. Tim Cook. Yeah, I feel like there's this natural sort of story of conflict evolving in the background between the Moonian and the planet itself and the wildlife. Similar to what I was saying about having a baby sandworm abducted and experimented on and the antithesis between them. <laughs> you know how I feel about a baby sandworm rescue quest. Yeah, yeah, so something along those lines. But um, but yeah, the entirety of uh, the Soviet Union is they always just kind of come in and just take over and try to assimilate whatever... Uh, resources and people and uh wildlife that they can right without any real regard for uh just like how how it does and if it you know hurts it or not it's just trying to make the like the forces of the soviet union stronger so they're definitely in conflict with like the planet itself and um but What's interesting is a lot of the like life forms, despite the Soviet Moonian it being this machine that's like tearing this planet apart, um, the life forms of this planet don't actively like recognize the robots as a threat, right? Because they're not like a living thing, so they don't. They think of it as like you know just like any other like machine. They don't like the structures and everything, but. You know, if you were to have like a moon bot and a grub right next to each other, moon bot's not gonna attack it uh, because the moon bot doesn't really see the grub as a threat because it's not, it's not in its programming to fight the grub because it's not Planet America, um, and the grub's not going to fight the moon bot because it doesn't see the moon bot as a threat because there's no bio signature from it. It's not food or anything. It's just it might as well be a rock to it. I'm Sim Cook, but rather than big picture stuff, you you aren't into brainstorm for rooms inside the facility, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just kind of looking for like different vibes of like the types of uh, environments we can have in this dungeon. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I was thinking like maybe even having like a botany lab, right? Uh, so we could have like some foliage and stuff. Um, and one of the reasons for that was it's it's like a, it's like a containment like terrarium for the grubs right because they wanted to like study them in their natural habitat so you could have some rooms that are like you know grass and like rock and some that are like sandy and some are the like red grass that's a solid idea I'm digging it yeah yeah, just uh, anything about, like, the conflict of, like, nature versus, like, mankind structure is, is, is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and you can do a lot with it, right? Things can go haywire so, so quickly. That's what, um, is, like, the general house of scientific work. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. Yeah, I mean, think about, think about Bioshock, right? Like, it's just, uh man's arrogance to like build a super city under under the ocean and then you know the moment something goes wrong of course nature's gonna mess you up and it's kind of the same thing with like dune right it's it's crazy and insane that anyone lives on that planet that's a person uh because like the desert will swallow you whole and just mess you up but they're there to mine all the spice and you know rather than terraform arrakis into like some place that's livable they're they're keeping it this like terrible hostile planet in order to like mine the spice. 
and uh, a lot of the people who mine the spice don't really respect the nature and it it uh, will very quickly mess them up kind of same thing in, in this game honestly <coughs> excuse me A lot, a lot, a lot taller. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's, that's right. These aren't, these aren't on the snap kit right now. That's why they're like goofed. But yeah, having like a giant fan at the top of the room just kind of like sprinkling sand down and then like occasionally just like walking about and what could be cool is like you're just like walking about the halls, you've just like killed a bunch of enemies and then you know, screen shakes, light flickers a little bit and you know, sand comes from the ceiling. If we want to get like really fancy with it, we could, you know, uh, have um, triggered events where you know you pass a certain trigger and certain enemies will like burst out of the ground. I think that'd be kind of cool. Like once you pass like a certain threshold, like the grubs kind of like dig up, like they're trying to take back this area. Yeah. So that definitely opens it up. I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of variety that you could do uh in this level right like just because it's an underground facility doesn't mean it has to be just like generic dungeon wall um i like the idea that um you know there's like a grub nest kind of trying to encroach back into this area um in the original mix space but if we had like these like holes in walls that you could put that the, the, you know they'd pop out of kind of similar to like skag holes from uh borderlands so we could definitely put those in this level right Keep the skylight like kind of bright just for like development sake but let me know if that's like too dark to see i can crank it up a little bit Feel like we need some sort of like half-life skit where you walk up to like see a moonion bot slowly being surrounded and then torn to shreds by a bunch of grubs i'd really like that right i'd love to like walk in and like see just like a grub with like a moon bot arm hanging out of its mouth um the only problem with that is it doesn't quite fit um like our 
like lore explanation for why we don't have third faction fighting at the moment. <laughs> um, so right now we don't have a, a way for there to be like three way fights, right? Like all the enemies are just kind of focused on like space biff. Uh, we want there to be that kind of thing at some point, but um, we've kind of also just like come up with lore that works around that, right? Where, you know, the uh, the moon bots don't have like any life energy, so the grubs don't really pay any mind. And, you know, the moon bots don't attack the grubs because they're not Planet America. Um, but I really love the idea of like just some grubs like really messing up some moon bots. That'd be very funny. Um. Trying to remember. What I used for the roof on the AI dev level. Yeah. Let me hop over to that real quick. At some point I really do need to make like a, a Soviet Munion logo. Um you know, some with like a hammer and sickle. Yeah, dude, we're, the, the level needs so many things to, like, cover those walls, right? It's gonna be so much work, but it will be worth it. Um, I guess I just did use the, the wall panels. Hmm. Okay. Let's go back to the dungeon. No, I don't want to save this. Um, floor. Give me the floor. Uh, oh, no. Before I change that, I want this to be the roof. The roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. And then we'll put like a big fan or something here at some point. Um, I want these. Oops. Ah, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Wait. Wait. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's a nice little, like, pattern, I think. Flip it around one more time to break it up. Then you can just use this one again. <coughs> Excuse me. Man, of course, when I stop trying to think of room ideas, I'm going to get, like, 100. Oh, yeah, dude. That's, that's how it works for, like, everything, right? I mean, you'll have like a, a bout where you're just desperately trying to come up with an idea for something. And then it'll be like two in the morning and you'll be like drifting off to sleep. And you'll be like super cozy and you're just exhausted and you're just like, you're so ready for the next day, right? You gotta get some sleep and then just like, boom! The, the best idea you've ever had and you're like, ah. Oh. I'm sure I'll remember it tomorrow. Let me sleep on it. And then you wake up and you're like, I have no idea what, what that idea was. Or, you know, 
you like try and like get out your phone or run to your computer to like write that idea down and um you forget that you write it down anyway so it's like you know it's never never when you want the idea sometimes an idea is good enough though that it like keeps coming back and then that's how you know it's like a real real little like gold nugget I really like the idea of digging hard into this sort of like McSpace Biff Universe MK Ultra stuff. <laughs> like just crazy wacky shit that they're doing to brainwatch the colonists. Yeah, dude, that's they're they're gonna be doing some like stupid stuff to like try and convert you, right? Because the whole premise of the Soviet Union is they're so low on manpower and resources, their main thing is just trying to convert colonists after they've done all the work right and you know this is based off of like retro uh sci-fi uh very like 50s and 60s era stuff so <laughs> mk ultra like experimentation is like totally totally on the board right it very much fits you want to be like pretty disjointed, right? Like a, not a defined and linear process from like A to Z, but like a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Totally unhinged, yeah, dude. Like it would be hilarious to walk into a room where they just have a bunch of colonists sitting at a computer desk with big words flashing on the screen. Yeah, yeah, so uh, <laughs> we talked about that where uh, when you find that first guy, he's just like, in a glass room with a bunch of monitors facing him and it's just flashing words like join and then like red and then like brotherhood and then like red and then like communism with like a thumbs up and then red it's just, it's just really stupid stuff <laughs> moon good oh man yeah moon good earth bad <laughs> Moonian great America weak yeah, it's like dumb stuff like that It'd be pretty funny maybe do like a point light I might in landscape mode um crank that attenuation <coughs> excuse me I think the lighting in this room isn't gonna look correct until uh, I have like an air vent, like push it down through so you can see like the the rotating fan blades on the floor. So I probably won't, probably won't even mess with it for now. Uh, you have your mission. Don't be shocked if you wake up one morning to an annoyingly long list of ideas. Hey man, I mean, that's, that's what that Discord's for. Like, McSpace Biff is very much a collaborative process, right? Like, we have, you know, we have, like, all the beats that we want to hit for, like, the campaign. Um, but just the general idea of McSpace Biff is it's very improvisational. So, we are always down for some ridiculously stupid idea, right? Because chances are, it's not as stupid as you think. And uh, if it's possible and makes for funny and or just fun gameplay, definitely. I'm gonna crank this skylight up a little bit. It 
kind of sunsetty orange at one point. Wow, that's such a difference. I don't know why, but seeing that drone in there made me think of you randomly running into one of the ventilation space and finding out somehow because you sent me in and it's terrified of everything. Oh man, that would be very funny, right? Uh, just just a drone that is like actually self-aware and isn't like part of the Soviet Union conglomerate. It's kind of like um, it reminds me of like the the difference between like the battle droids. In uh, like Star Wars Episode One versus like Two, right? So in the first one, uh, those battle droids like all had like a singular mindset and all operated from like a central computer, so they didn't have any personality. Um, and then later on, in order to allow them to like operate independently, they gave them like sentience, which made them like scared of death and stuff, and just. Uh, but as a result, they had to be like generally dumber too, because they didn't have like a big computer running their processing. <laughs> so I really like the idea of like generally the drones are like operating on just like basic kill instructions, but there's just like one that they tested, you know, general upgraded sentience, and it's just terrified. That would be so funny. Like it, I did not sign up for this, neither consciousness or war. Like he comes to life and sees all the action and just runs and hides immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's really funny. Especially if you're like seeing all your like robot friends getting like torn to shreds by like terrible grub creatures and you know, colonists and scavengers and everything and just goes like hides. That'd be very, very funny. That's like a classic, like, um, uh, Dark Souls and, like, Souls game thing, too, where eventually you just run across an enemy that is, uh, it has, like, the same model as, like, an enemy you've been, like, slaughtering, and it just happens to have dialogue, right? Uh, there's, like, an area in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't remember, but it's an it's an area in Elden Ring where there's like a bunch of like sick people, and uh, you've just been like killing hundreds of them, and then all of a sudden there's just like one guy with the same model, and you get to like hang out and talk to him, and you're like, oh man, well now I feel bad because it's like I've been killing all this guy's friends. I think that'd be funny because it's not like we can't do it because we have, you know. Like a dialogue system. <laughs> Hello, meatbag. Say something nice. Say something mean. You know, we can give it to anyone. <laughs> oh shit, these are people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, smidge of a spoiler, I guess, but at one point, um, we had considered having an NPC um, that is you know, uh, a skeleton, right? Like a metal skeleton. Yeah, yeah, speaking of skeleton, that's the default test dialogue from the smoking skeleton and Denizen. Um, this guy right here, just what he's saying. Uh, but yeah, speaking of, uh, we had this idea where uh, we would hide a character in McSpaceBiff that is a metal smoking skeleton, and he's like, 
uh, the alpha project of like the next generation of Moonbot to make them like smarter. And uh, what they were doing is they were captioning, uh, not captioning, capturing uh, American colonists. So the Soviet Union was like abducting American colonists and then like operating on them and like putting their brains uh, into robots. And then they were going to try and convert them to uh, join the Soviet Union. And one of these guys just had like such a strong will. He was able to like break free and like kill all the scientists and break out of the facility. Um, and you know, uh, because you know, he was the first one to like actually survive the surgery and not go insane. Uh, he's kind of like the only one like that. Um, but yeah, he's like an NPC. We're gonna like have to be fine. Yeah, the smoke is gonna. You remember that pony bastard? Yeah, yeah. So it was like kind of just like a way to like figure out a way to bring a smoking skeleton into the lore of McSpace Piff and kind of makes sense. So he's essentially like, you know, like a Terminator skeleton with like a human brain in it. And uh, that way, you can still kind of have a smoking skeleton and it not be, uh, you know, not sci-fi. So, we'll probably put him probably in the final game. We might sneak him in somewhere in, um, in the demo. I'm not sure. Depends on, like, how detailed we want to get with this model. It might just be as simple as, like, Slapping some chrome on a on a, the smoking skeleton from Denizen and calling it a day. I mean that'd kind of be fine with me, honestly, if it looks okay. But we also might want to like build a skeletal mesh, right? Like a more like a T100 from Terminator. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and crank up the uh, lighting again because this is it is too dark. I wanted it to be like a whole Terminator type thing, but if it was like from the 50s though. Yeah, dude, that's 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 kind of what I'm saying. Like they were trying to build uh, the ultimate uh, Soviet, right? Because, like, you know, there's nothing better than an undying skeleton super soldier that uh, is brainwashed into following the Soviet Union indefinitely and has a built-in kill switch, right? Nothing better than that. Um, Terminator from the 50s, yeah. Zim Cook, I wrote some serious lore for those skeletons. I actually ran into that lore pitch document recently. Oh, dude! Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Denison had some really cool stuff, and anything we can kind of, like, pay an homage to or, like, borrow a little bit, I'm kind of fine with. Um, to be honest, uh, when we come back to Denison, it'll probably be a completely different game. Um, just based off of, like, what we'll be able to do, right? Like, it's inherently going to change the type of game it's going to be. Um, so, pulling some ideas from Denizen into Mixbase Fifth, I think is fine. Um, like, even having, like, a Dr. Brian type character could be kind of cool. 
like a Soviet doctor who uh, failed to transmute other Soviets' brains into robots, so he tried it on himself first. Hell, we could probably even reuse the model from Dr. Brian. We never did anything with him. Nothing better. Yeah, based off of the Denizen demo, it was a different game than my interpretation. In a good way. Well, that's good. Yeah, Denizen had a lot of potential. Um, there was a lot of stuff for the game that we uh, kept working on and just kind of never showed off. Like, different guns and enemies. Uh, like, Will made this, like, super cool Wraith type enemy. Um, he did, like, a devlog about it. Uh, but... That's different than, you know, like, seeing it in engine. Did, like, some different levels, different guns. Uh, yeah. It's a cool project. We'll definitely uh, revisit it at some point. Like, way, way, way down the road, right? Um, <coughs> next game we'll probably revisit, uh, if anything, is going to be deadlocked, right? Just because uh, we want to tidy that up and finally uh, push out some updates for it. We're in the midst of um, I don't want to talk about it too too much until it's like you know, a thousand percent, but we're kind of gearing up to buy the rights back of uh, Root and Deadlock. Uh, so we'll have full control over it, and then once that's you know official uh, we'll probably start working on a little deadlock update. We gotta get the project, like, working again, because it's, you know, eight years old and in an old version of Unity, and it's, it's Ian's code, and, you know, we didn't write it, so it's, you know, kind of hard to navigate it, but, yeah, I think it'd be cool to put out an, uh, an update at some point. It's not, like, super high priority for us, but, uh... It's something we definitely want to do. Oh, and y'all had this cool vaulting mechanic. Never seen that anywhere else at, <laughs> at an awfully coincidental time. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the vaulting mechanic and Denizen uh, ended up being like very, very uh, similar to uh, Doom Eternal. Uh, it's, it's cool to see, you know, a different game take an idea that we did, you know, a couple years prior and, you know, add it into theirs and, you know, I'm not mad about it. I mean, climbing and vaulting in games has been around since Assassin's Creed, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're working on McSpace Spiff. First and foremost, uh, just because, you know, um, more people can play McSpace Biff, right? And it's a game we're more passionate about. Um, Deadlock was cool, you know. It, To be honest, Deadlock kind of does everything that we wanted Deadlock to do. Uh, we kind of just wanted to make, you know, a cyberpunk space pirate trainer. Um, and we did that and it works and it's fun. You know, it's like fun to like get out at parties or whatever, but, um, we, we kind of still feel that, uh, VR is just really limited right now. Right? Like Half-Life Alex is crazy and awesome, but even that, like, it's still not quite up to like what we want VR to be. Right? So... Facebook first, but when the burnout sets in, that'll be cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely more so like when we're like just burn out on Space Biff and have hit like a a roadblock when it comes to like creativity. Um, but yeah, I, th I think uh, this is our our main priority, right? Because this is code that uh, Will and I have all built. Uh, and maintained ourselves, so it's not 
uh, someone else's work that we're like tinkering with. So it's just cleaner in general. Not like that though. Uh, so how much interaction do you want to build into these rooms? Is it more of a series of spectacles you watch or would you like have a little half-life interaction with things? So um, at some point I would love McSpace Booth to have like that kind of sandboxy half-life and or uh, root interaction. But for now, for a demo, let's think of it more as like spectacle, right? Things uh, like a room, not so much with its own like mechanic or anything, but more so just like different types of set dressing or logs or anything of that sort, right? There's two of them. Let's Star Wars. I think I'm going to. Is that this? Ah, man, this, this rock kind of just keeps getting in the way. I get too much. Maybe some light puzzles, especially co-op puzzles. Yeah, yeah, so, um, I definitely wanna do uh, puzzles, right? Like I have some ideas like mechanically on things we could do. Um, Again, uh, I want to like, at some point in this demo, potentially work out um, Oh man, uh, a mechanic where you can like Pick your friend up and like throw them or like run with them obviously this animation is like kind of goofy and a little jank right now right but um having a mechanic where you could like you know pick a friend up and then like launch them to a place that you wouldn't normally be able to get to i think would be like a kind of cool way to like do puzzles right because it's like a cooperative element and um, how you would do it if you were solo in the areas where um, you'd have to do the puzzle. There would always be like a, uh, a remote control bot station. So uh, basically uh, it would be like a Soviet uh, worker bot that you would like go to the station and, you know, uh, pull him out and you would be able to like swap back and forth with that guy right and uh, you know you could pick him up and then throw him to the spot and then swap to him and have him pull the lever and then you go do your thing but um, other things like uh, you know throwing a player up into a vent that you can't reach in order for them to like drop down into a room to like uh, hold a door open for you or something. Yeah, the boomerang is kind of an antidote for single player and runs of a co-op game. Um, yes, but it's not entirely uh, fitting with like all the types of puzzles I want to do, right? Um, I like the idea where you have to like 
think through of who's going to be where and what location. There's a really good game uh, that is a perfect example of that, uh, and it's it's called it It Takes Two, and it's something I'm playing with uh, my girlfriend at the moment right now, and it's really really cool because um, every every level is a new concept uh in terms of like puzzle mechanics in that game where it's like you each get your own power uh right now we're playing through like a magnet level where um each person has a magnet but it's only half of a magnet where uh you can uh repel things of the same color and then push things away of a different color and you have to like pull and push things for the different players to like move through the level and it's just really really cool um <coughs> there's also going to be um types of puzzle elements in mixed space but based off of the abilities that you as the player gets so you know things like uh melting like ice or you know being able to move through an irradiated hall or whatever could also have some kind of remote controlled drone yeah yeah a remote control drone could definitely work f16 could that be the sentient drone like you recruit him through some skillful dialogue maneuvering or does that take away from it because i love the idea of a remote control drone that's interesting hmm yeah having him do stuff it would be kind of funny if he like followed you around and you could like tell him to like do something um that's interesting mechanically i like that idea like being able to like kind of recruit someone to like help you with stuff but i don't think um <clears throat> i don't think that's good for puzzle design right because what i'm trying to do and like I have a couple like on paper like of like how it would work I want the uh, puzzle to kind of be built around a cooperation with a friend right and you know there's a lot of stuff you can't uh, tell like a bot to do without like a lot of complex programming but there's like things you could articulate to a person and then, then have them do that. And it's the same thing where it's like, if you took control of the robot to like do something over here, it's still you doing something like kind of complex, right? Like knowing when to like, you know, uh, hold a lever or roll under, you know, a door to like do like something like Indiana Jones style the last second, right? Um, so I kind of want to build the puzzles based around like a cooperative effort because if, if you just make it where it's like an AI does it for you, then your friends aren't doing anything, right? Um, now the issue with that is if we are going to do four player co-op, it, it, it kind of leaves like not much for the other two players to do, but um, I feel like most puzzles are best when it comes to like two players and if you start pushing it out past that uh the puzzle either gets too complex for like people who don't know what to do to solve uh but more importantly um it just i don't know it like it's not good as a single player experience Okay, okay. So you are you and I are talking about the same thing. The AI wouldn't just do it. You'd possess the pawn so you'd do the drive. Yes, yeah, yeah. That'd be fine. Yeah. As long as you, the player, are controlling that pawn, that's okay. And if they kind of, you know, mindlessly follow you around, uh, and you could give it, like, basic commands of, like, stay here or follow me, that'd be fine. Um, Wind Waker... Uh, Zelda Wind Waker had some puzzles where uh, you could tell an AI to like follow you. Um, 
and uh, it would just kind of like follow you around or you could tell it to stop and then you could swap to it, right? This is kind of where those ideas are coming from. Um, I didn't realize it until now, but probably subconsciously. Yeah, that way someone would still activate it. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be good. And my thoughts are if you, you know, have a friend with you, a lot of these, um, a lot of these puzzles would be able to be done without that AI pawn, but we, we could still make you, you know, control them anyway. Um, could even like help you fight and stuff. That'd be kind of cool. What is going on with the textures? I need to, I need to like up the, <coughs> up the streaming pool size. There we go. That looks better. Hopefully that doesn't like tank the stream though. I really need a new graphics card. It could actually be good to have that AI pawn in case you're playing with someone who's having a hard time with puzzles. Yeah, exactly. That, that's kind of my th my thoughts is that AI pawn's always going to be available. And uh, kind of what I'm thinking is every player could get one because at no point are you adding more players to the element right um maybe they don't aggro enemies at first so someone could slip in and then fly in a cluster of drones unnoticed like if there was a line of them going from one place to another you could even get into a room of importance that could be kind of cool yeah be kind of sneaky for them um <coughs> Yeah, what I was thinking is uh, whatever pawn you're possessing, uh, it could f do the same like attacks and stuff that they normally do in the game, right? So, like a drone would still be able to like do the laser, the bot would still be able to like shoot a machine gun or just like punch. Because um, you don't want it to like die immediately, right? But you also don't want it to like get ignored by enemies because that, that feels kind of lame. Because it, it, it should still feel like you're controlling it. But yeah, I mean, we already have... Um, like a way to control the, the moon bots, right? In like third person. I don't remember which one it's, it's called, but... We have like some way to... move the uh, moonbot around as a character. I don't remember the name of it. F-16 would know. But. Anyway. We basically already have everything set up to like remotely control uh, a pawn, right? Hmm. What was I doing? Right, right. I was over here. And I went off on a tangent talking about uh, puzzles. Sorry you missed that. Yeah, no worries, man. I mean, that's just good that we're on the same page even when we're not, like, <laughs> communicating properly, right? Like, the, the ideas that we have are... Uh, the same so that means we're we're in the general mixed space piff zeitgeist you gotta you gotta go some good ideas kicking around well hey man thanks for hanging out it's always cool to have you here um will does some uh streaming on i think it's mondays and wednesdays around noon so uh recently he he made a, a very, very, very cool uh, grub anime that we've been wanting for a while, and he's probably going to polish that up on the next stream, so be sure to check that out if you're uh, if you're into character design, which you should be because it's cool, and uh, our characters are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
That series is great. Little Grub Boy. Awesome brainstorm with you guys as always. Have a great night. Yeah. Yeah, we do a little creature design. Yeah, we're a couple of gremlins ourselves, so. We, we know what makes for interesting creatures. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, man. See you next time. All right. Ooh. Oh, I didn't mean to delete that entirely. There we go. That's looking nice. <coughs> a power. It feels like there needs to be a power room, like with this massive generator running this place. Yes, yes. So, um, that's actually going to be the final room you get into. Um, it's simultaneously going to be like a power room and like the massive uh, conversion room, right? And you're gonna find like a bunch of bots and drones and everything, and you're uh, going to be like, you know blowing up generators and pulling plugs and stuff as there's like different waves of enemies like attacking you and uh maybe just maybe you get to talk to uh the soviet moonion super ai we'll see <coughs> excuse me there's also um we've got a pretty cool boss idea for um for the end of this level um it's, uh, it's actually a boss from the original make space biff let me see if i can pull up the the original do we not have a screenshot of the guy? Oh man. <laughs> Let me uh You know what? We're just gonna <laughs> yeah, your bosses is this like a souls like or something what next ladders yeah man we're crazy like that so let me uh let me pull this up this is the original mcspace biff take a little little gander at this real quick i'll kind of talk about like some of the uh enemies and everything that are gonna make it into it <laughs> Little blast from the past here. Oh, terrible, terrible trailer pacing. I don't know what we were thinking. Yeah, what is it, like a full 30 seconds before anything happens? Okay, so those are the grubs. You know, we're making the newer version of them right now. That's higher poly, but essentially they're the same thing. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. Aliens, you know, we got the grays grays in the game already same type of armor and everything just a little bit higher fidelity now uh those bots are very uh, that's that's the bull grub uh we'll we'll probably do an iteration of that at some point you know dark Souls style boss but um yeah it's just kind of neat to go back and look at everything are those little spider bots from root no other way around um so McSpacepiff actually was before Root, and then we kind of took the AI from them and kind of brought them over into Root, and then we designed the uh, Spiderbots to be a little bit different once they were in Root, and then they we just kind of scrapped their functionality. Because uh, the ones in Root, uh, they can't see you if you're not moving. Uh, just because we thought it was like an interesting like stealth-related mechanic. Yeah, they've they've got like their own own design and route. Yeah, 
yeah, as you can see in, in the original Mixed Space Biff, there was a couple of varieties of uh, environment. This is the enemy, right? So... Yeah, shooting the alien off of... Uh, sorry, shooting the head off of an alien before uh, you can headshot it. Yeah, uh, we had a mechanic where the helmets would like go flying off, and that's when you could get the headshot. We're gonna do the same thing in this one, uh, but yeah, this is the this is the enemy, right? It's a it's a break dancing tripod. <laughs> it's so goofy, right? But very very menacing. Um, in the original McSpace Biff, uh, you ended up fighting him on like one of the higher waves in the wave defense. Um, but in like one of the levels, uh, you fought him in an elevator shaft, so you didn't really have anywhere to run. And he like break dances and stomps on you and shoots lasers. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna make an iteration of that guy and uh, put him in put him in the new game. Anyway, that's the guy we're going to be adding. Yeah, he had uh, he had weak points. So his um, his eye was one of his weak points, and then he also had a bit on his back. Um, yeah, and we're we're gonna do the same thing. We're we're gonna design uh, weak points on all of our bosses. That's such a classic like game thing. I mean, I don't know what game did it for. I mean, Zelda kind of made it famous with their bosses. Why is this? Oh, there it is. It wasn't like adjusting. Under his feet too, right? No, um, under his feet were just regular. He would like stomp on you though, or the ends of it. Too. Uh, I think his guns took slightly more damage. Yeah, he uh, that tripod uh had a. Uh, stomp uh, attack. I think we show it. Um, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Nah, whatever. Yeah, but it had like a... Yeah, see right there? Uh, the the jump so it landing that was also like an attack right so it would like jump and like slam down and then it would like have a ring go out that you could like jump over um i don't think that was in the build that we ended up showing everyone but uh oh where do my windows go what on earth what on earth start talking about my old game and my computer decided to revert back to DOS or something. What the heck? What the heck? That's just crazy. Okay, we're back. Yeah, there was a there was a bunch of different attacks and stuff, right? And um Make space biff. Uh, even in the original one, there was like still rolling, right? We were masochists in how we implemented it because we did it in first person. Like there was a bit in that trailer. I don't know if you saw it, but <laughs> you did like a somersault and it like flipped the whole screen, and it was just very, very uh, disorienting. But it did some cool stuff too. Um, Back when we were working with Ian, I kind of like pitched him a, a bunch of different ideas of like how it should work. And uh, one of my ideas was after your character rolled, uh, you should be able to jump higher. Doesn't make sense, but it's kind of cool. So, um, and then also we had this like slide mechanic, right? Where you could dash in every direction and then it would like make your character capsule smaller. Um, so you could actually use it to kind of like dash through like uh, windows and stuff. And funny enough, uh, the way it was programmed, 
Um, it didn't take into account like if you were in the air or not. So it was an air dash, like an air dodge. And this was like 12 years ago. And then I liked it so much that I designed a bunch of like the levels and stuff around it. Um, levels we never put out. We had like this like, we called it the, we lovingly referred to it as the goo level. Uh, it was just like a green toxic waste factory. Uh, but there was like a lot of like fast paced platforming and stuff. And, uh, and there was like jumps you could only do if you would roll, get the momentum from the roll and then jump higher with the roll and then do an air dodge to change your trajectory to go back around something. Uh, very, very cool stuff. Felt very, very nice. And then, you know, um, we kind of fell in love with just, uh, just dodging ever since, right? So, our games since day one have always had some sort of, like, advanced mobility mechanic. Nice. Can't believe I made that jump. Yeah. I really like those good parkour move sets and character controllers. One of the main things I really like about Dishonored 2 is that the movement is just insane. Yeah, dude. Um, there's just so many things you can string together in uh, the Dishonored series. Um, Heck, even the like movement and prey can get kind of interesting if you know like what you're doing and when and prepare for it. But yeah, Dishonored had some just insane movement techs. <laughs> the goo level, yeah, yeah, the goo level. Your integration of dodge dash into FPS games has always been awesome. Yeah, dude, uh, it's something we're, like, really, really fond of. Um, you know, because when we were originally making the first mixed space biff, like, our, our first, like, venture at it, uh, let's see, that would have been, <coughs> excuse me, 12 years ago, and just around that time, we were playing uh, Dark Souls, and... Uh, someone always in the garage was like playing dark souls on this like giant old tube tv and we just really loved the dodge mechanic and we were just like why has this never been in a first person game right it's like surely like people are going to want more mobility in their games um and by having some sort of like dodge mechanic in a first person shooter it allows you to make melee based characters that don't feel spongy right because we played so much stuff like serious sam and they had all these melee characters uh and they would either go down instantly because we didn't you didn't want them to like get up in your face and like beat you up because you didn't have like any way to like deal with them so we're just like throwing a dodge and then make their move sets very similar to, like zelda or dark souls and you can time it and then you get your shots in on their critical points such a cool mechanic, and it's always been very underutilized until kind of the last couple years. Um, you see it in more games, things like uh, Doom Eternal, um, Witchfire. Uh, there's a couple characters in Overwatch that have like a mid-air dash, that kind of thing. If you played a bunch and devote it, you can zip around all Talos. Yeah, 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 pray. Prey definitely does have some depth to its movement. It's not quite Dishonored levels, uh, because that would break the game, honestly. But there's, you can get around fast, especially like once you get that like gliding mechanic. Um, speaking of, we're probably gonna have something like that in Mixed Space Buff at some point. Let's see, if you played a bunch. Uh, yeah, I thought of Root when I was playing Redfall, because I truly, truly think if Arcane had added a directional dash, it would have amped the vampire boss fights immensely. It was an obvious missing piece when playing it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's such a cool, such a cool thing. Um, Witchfire uh, is a good example of like a new game that does it very, very well in, in a way that's very similar to uh, how we did it, right? 
Actually, Witchfire has like a lot of uh, overlap with like Denizen in terms of like tone. So it was kind of cool to see that game like do well. I think it's coming out of early access pretty soon. I haven't played Witchfire myself, uh, but just from the gameplay, very, very cool game, right? Um, you probably won't be able to run it because it's like a it's a newer Unreal Engine 5 game. And uh, as we know, those have a tendency to be hefty. Big boys. Big boys need some big, big graphics cards. I mean, RTX 4090, I'll tell you what. Yeah. We're, um... I mean, we're gonna try and optimize, um... Make space booth the best we can, but... No promises on it being able to run on... You know, lower-end systems, because... We're just two guys, you know? We want our game to look good. Because that's like how you market your game, right? Um, and if we're gonna have to pick our game looking good versus like being able to run on a Switch, we're probably gonna have our game look good, right? Um, I mean, that, that said, we're going to optimize the crap out of it, uh, like, once it's ready to go. Um, but yeah, there's not, like, a lot of, like, super performant Unreal Engine 5 games, to be honest, except for, I don't know, Fortnite, but Fortnite has a billion dollars to work with. So, we'll see. And that's, you know, that's not to say, like, our game is gonna, like, be super heavy or anything, right? But I don't know if it's, it's not gonna be like our game Root, where Root will run on a, you know. Our, our, we spent so much time on our first game Root, making sure it would run on, like, everything. In fact, uh, Root runs on max which is insane uh because it is so difficult to compile games for uh macintosh and then also like no one has like no one's gaming on, no one's gaming on a macintosh they like actually care about games right like the type of games like most people are going to run on macintosh are like i don't know like mist or sims or something like that i don't know because uh, most people who have a Mac and want a game are running a separate Windows or Linux partition. Because uh, Mac isn't supported by anything. But yeah, uh, Root was designed to work on a kerosene-powered cheese grater. Um, or, you know, like, it'll run on a toaster. Because that game, um, when we originally made it, it was made in, like, Unity 4, uh, and there was, like, no real-time lighting, and because there was no real-time lighting in that, uh, well, th th there was real-time lighting, but you couldn't do real-time shadows on the free version of Unity, so we wanted to make a game that would look good with, like, no real-time lighting, so we came up with, like, all these, like, custom shaders, uh, and everything is, like, shader and material-based, so there's, like, no textures, levels are, like, super, super small, um, it, it, it's our doom. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's still not like super optimized, um, because we did eventually uh, put like lights and shadows and stuff in. But you can still run it on like the lower settings, and it, you know, it, it'll run on on most computers, right? Not on. 
on. Okay, this is this is on the snap. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. So what are your main considerations as you continue with the building design right now? Um, so that's a very good question, right? I'm trying to make these like little pockets of like just little engagement areas. Um, I'm probably going to start building like some arenas or whatever, right? But at the very beginning of a level, I kind of always want to give the player a little bit of a, a breather, right? Because they're they're going to want to explore, they're going to want to get a vibe and feel of the level, so they're not going to want to like fight a bunch of stuff. You want to give them like enemies to kill, but you don't want to overwhelm them. Um, but the general idea of this level is I'm trying to give multiple paths that will more or less funnel into the same area it's not quite like those like old school dune levels where you know they all it, it goes in every direction and then comes back somewhere um there is a general ebb and flow i'm working on right now um the point of the level isn't to to backtrack but you know I want to allow the player to backtrack if they want to, you just explore it. Um, a lot of the root levels were like that, actually. So root would have like a starting area, right? And then an end point somewhere off, off in the distance. And there were like a bunch of different paths you could take to get to that end point. And generally you would have to take two or three of those paths to, to get there, but you didn't have to take all of them. So, yeah, what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just like build interesting hallways right now that are going to funnel into a kind of small arena area. And then um, from there, break out and then eventually another boss arena. Because, yeah, like, I'm putting a lot of effort in this area, but um, at the moment, it's actually, like, really hard to even, like, come down here and find this, right? Um, so, what I'm probably going to do is um, make it a little more apparent that this is, like, a way you, like, funnel down into. Because um, I don't want such a large path to be missed. But right now, I just have the level in two different segments, right? Because I don't want to overwhelm them with choice. Because that's a, that's a big problem in level design is uh, option paralysis. Like, if you see... Players can realistically pick between about three options at any given point um, and any more than that they they don't know which way to go and uh, they'll generally feel bad about what they pick because there's just more options and you're gonna be like ah oh, well man I should have gone that other way because that other way looked cool and the odds of you picking the wrong one out of four or more is higher than you know two or three um, I'm actually just going to delete this for now. The wood is bothering me. 
It should be glass at some point. Um, how about cover like pieces of the building that have fallen in those sand areas? Always cover, uh, not really what you want. Um, yeah, so I'm not building cover at the moment right now, um, but cover is something I do on second passes on structures. So generally what I want first is I want the flow of the room to make sense. Like I want players to have an idea of where they need to go, um, what looks good, and if the space in itself is like too big or too small to fight in at all. And then from there, once you have like the general feel of the area uh, put in, that's when you start adding clutter and cover and like things for the players to like move around. Like something like a room like this would have like boxes or like small desks or something, like something to like crouch behind. Because this is kind of a long line of sight, right? Um, but I'm still building all these areas and is this a flipped vert? Oh, uh-uh. Nay, nay. Well, that needs to die. <laughs> uh. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, to me, a big part of uh, level design is just... Are the vibes any good, right? Like, what's the... Like, does the layout make any sense? Um, like, I need to be able to navigate a space before I want to, like, overly detail an area. Because uh, if I put all this effort into, like, dropping cover and everything uh, before I'm even sure, like, it makes sense in the run-through of the level, it's just wasted time, right? Like, I know for certain right now... I'm liking this room and I like the layout of this room, but I don't necessarily know if I like how you have to get to this room. Um, so going through and like placing cover here doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Um, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm thinking I want like a way to cut back down to the right into it. Um, because another thing that's important, I think, now this, this isn't true for a lot of games uh, and a lot of people, but I like the um, the general run times of different paths to be about the same, right? Um, that way the players, even if they take a different route, have a more or less uh, consistent experience when it comes to pacing. Um, because it gives me a better idea of like, okay, like how long is the average player going to be in this type of level? Uh, cause that's really, really important when it comes to like feeling out, is a player going to get bored in this type of environment for too long? And, um, also, you know, you don't want one path to be like 45 minutes long and then the other path to be 20 cause that's completely different experiences right so having to do this like back and forth dance to make sure everything feels good now because this is like technically closer to this area in order to have the runtime be similar to this area you have to make someone like work their way out and then back to it um and some things uh, that I would do, especially when I was like playing, um, when I designed a lot of levels for Halo, um, I would do the same thing and I would take like a stopwatch out, right? And I would time how long it would take me to run to different parts of the map for like balance reasons when it comes to like placing level, uh, not levels, uh, weapons and like cover and vehicles. Uh, Cause a lot of my maps are technically asymmetrical, like they just have completely different geometry and paths and everything, but you can still balance them, right? And that that concept 
uh, carries over into game level design. Yeah, so right now, um, the main path that everyone's going to take is this right here. Because that's the it's the path of least resistance, right? Um, yeah, that's kind of a problem because that's that's leaving like all these areas with no one, no one going down them. So I like essentially designed all this for nothing. So I have to figure out a way to bring players into that area that fe in a way that feels good um, without it feeling like I'm forcing their hand. So whatever you do, it's going to feel a little uh, unnatural to backpedal, right? Because you're going to want to keep moving forward. This is, a, I might have actually like designed myself into a corner here. What I could do is I could make them make a decision very early on between two paths, here and here. It's not as interesting though, because it's, you know, I want them to like ski more of the level. I want them to make more of a, an informed decision based off of the vibe that they want. Because the two paths aesthetically are going to be different. I could also just reshape and rethink what I want this level to be and maybe maybe this level doesn't work so much as a funnel. Maybe I do have you running back and forth through these areas. That's another that's another consideration cuz if I am having you run back and forth through these areas, it doesn't matter as much if uh a player picks one path over the other first. You know what? That's something I might do here. Um. <coughs> yeah, yeah, the engine for running back and forth would be uh, objectives, right? So making them like have to uh, collect different pieces of like say a code or something to unlock like a giant blast door. Um, how we did it in Brute, it was like key cards, right? So you would need like three key cards to break through a firewall. And maybe there were five key cards in a level. So they're like actually bits of the level that you could skip. Um, and you know, if you wanted to get all five key cards, you could. You could play the entire level, um, but the generalized experience is you want the required amount of objects to take generally the same amount of time. So all these like different paths uh, take different ways. And to be honest, that's the type of level I like the most in a game, right? Like I, I like. I like player agency. What can I say? Um, best view. Yeah. No, I'm. Uh, I'm not touching that link, man. That looks like virus. <laughs> yeah. Ignore that chat. Don't. Don't. Don't click on that link. We don't need your viewers. We got all the viewers we need right here. Let's see. <laughs> you know it, preach. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I think these could be flipped. Flip the script on them. Yeah, that looks better. Mm 
Yeah, I'm thinking... I was gonna design this more like a... Uh, like an older like Halo 3 level where uh, it kind of like funnels you into a certain area, but... I mean, McSpace Biff is already kind of an open world game, so it would be kind of weird to have levels that uh, make you play them in a certain order. Now, that that said, you can do it in stages, right? But um, having like these like little miniature sandboxes to run around is always kind of cool. So what if you manifested the sub-objective into like three or four big pieces of their experimental scientific operation, each with different flavors? So like you got one blockage, you need three or four things to unblock it. That could be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like that. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, well, and um, one thing we did in like... Manically tied to the crazy shit going on. Interesting. Yeah, it could be something like maybe this portion of the facility is on like high alert or lockdown. Uh, and, you know, the blast door isn't going to open until you like clear out the uh, the issues. And it could be anything from like you know, there's like a gas leak in one area, and then there's like grub infestation in another, rogue moon bots in a different segment, right? So, you know, you have to like deal with all those things before you'll like lower the threat level enough for the blast door to open further into the facility. That could be kind of cool. Yeah, and, and the thing is, you could you could still have like multiple options, right? But uh, the way like the door operates, it it won't it won't open if the uh, facility is more than like a, like on forty percent high alert, right? So you do like the five, all five areas if you wanted to 100% it, but you could also just clear out three and then, you know, the alert level would drop low enough for you to be able to move further into the facility. Would be kind of cool. This place is just a massive disarray. Yeah, everything about this facility is like falling apart. I mean, you'll, you'll come into some rooms that look like fine, but you know, then the next one will have like sand and like just rubble like, piercing through. Yeah, five options and you choose three. Or just four options and you choose three. Or three options and you choose two. But, uh... Giving the... Giving the player a little bit of agency on how they do this level is kind of cool. That said, um... You know, we could do more... Narrow experiences down the road if we want a very particular vibe for something. Um like crucial story mission levels where you're interacting with like a very specific character or doing a very particular thing could have um, a very one track portion of that level. But that doesn't mean the entire level has to be that way. All about multiple game campaigns through game to see everything there. I yeah, really, really like this idea. It feels like it leans more into the open execution. Yeah, I agree. Because, um, you know, it's it's odd to go from a general sandbox overworld game and then kind of funneling players into a one-track level. Um, most levels are, are like campaign missions in a um, open world game. Give the player at least a little bit of player agency. 
to decide, you know, like, do I want to approach this with stealth? Do I want to approach this with action? Do I want to approach this from the east or the north or south or whatever? So, I'm all about that. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a damn fine glass of water. Yeah, I think I might start building that like terrarium over this way. I don't know where. should actually probably start over this way, right? Oh, that'd be kind of cool coming in. Angled here. We'll do that. really need like a angled half wall at some point. No, I'm right there with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you're liking the idea of the level. Like I said, it's it's so easy sometimes to just be like working on an idea and you think it's like awesome. Uh, and then, you know, you get so caught up trying to make it that you don't realize like, oh, actually, this is awful. Or sometimes you second guess yourself and you're like, ah, this isn't as cool as I thought it was. Let me just let me just go back real quick and redo the whole thing. So, yeah, having having feedback from people um, is in getting getting player feedback is such an easily overlooked portion of uh, game development right because it's it's so easy to end up in your own world and just just focus on something that doesn't matter um, and it's to be honest, kind of impossible to know what's important in your game until other people have looked at it or commented on it. People end up spending like five or six years on a game and they don't even understand what's fun about it, right? It's like they have this vision that they go and like try and do. And then when they show off the game, players gravitate towards some other mechanic that they didn't even really pay any mind to or think about or maybe not even implement at all so i think i think getting player feedback is uh something you should do early and often right that said some people have no idea what they're talking about and you gotta stick with your gut instincts to a certain degree So what are some ultimate scientific objectives? We got brainwashing and growth of the numbers. How about cultivating food, water, or their version of food? <laughs> I mean, the colonists would eat, right? What if they had them churning up just like these disgusting protein bars like Snowpiercer, the brainwashed colonists? Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's like one of the reasons they're harvesting the grubs, right? Because the grubs are bugs and, uh, and a big thing about like communist like dystopias is they're like you will you will eat the bugs and like it right because they don't want to like put all the effort into like having food that's like actually good it's like they they don't really care about you so they're they're gonna like 
feed you protein in like the most economical way pro like possible um, so grub farming grubs don't taste good they're not they're not tasty um, they won't give you brain rot that's one thing you know they don't make you like super slow and and doofy but uh, they don't taste good Propaganda production area. Yeah, that'd be kind of funny. Just like a bunch of... It would be kind of funny if there was just like... Essentially like a sweatshop. Where it's just like a bunch of like... Uh, moon bots like... Typing very slowly on a computer. Trying to like figure out propaganda. But yeah, um, general things would be like creating, trying to create super soldiers, manufacturing plants, uh, fabricating of like materials, that kind of thing. And then just like general scientific experimentation stuff. Propaganda, your new food. <laughs> yeah, you get to eat propaganda and like it. If you want to eat, get back in the gulag. It's slop for dinner. Yeah, that that type of scope needs to be sandbox level. You can't, well, especially if you want people to experience like an environmental story, um, making them funnel their way past something at a billion miles an hour is not a very good way to tell it, right? So if you're gonna put all this effort into like making this level and like putting like these like little nuggets in the world, you kind of want to make them like run past it once or twice. Uh, I mean, the people who aren't going to care about the thing just aren't going to care about it anyway. But, you know, the type of person who is going to care, um, it's possible they could just miss it if it was just, you know, a one off. So. This. Walking in on Moonian bots, betting on grub fights be too much. <laughs> <laughs> Snuck away in a basement somewhere. That would be funny. Um, I think that would be a better thing for um, the Soviet colonists to be doing, right? Because um, that's the type of animation we could reuse uh, in just like a regular colony. So a lot of... I wish we had more pet like manpower or money or time or any of those three things um but because we are two people who work you know like 60 70 hours a week at our regular jobs we have to think of everything from like uh is this a use like a reusable thing uh everything everything we build we can't afford to do one-offs uh and if there is a one-off it has to be just 
just balls to the wall like crazy. Like a boss fight, right? Like there's a lot of bang for your buck with a boss fight. And the thing is with like boss fights, you can potentially like even reintroduce those as regular enemies down the road. Dark Souls style. Um, but when it comes to small team development, you you can't be doing all these like one-off ideas uh, without it really affecting the development of the rest of the game. So as much as I like certain ideas, sometimes I just have to shelf them and I go, you know, that's that's for someday when, you know, I'm doing this full time and I've got like a little bit of money or a bigger team. Um, but again, sometimes uh, one offs are low enough effort to do. And also sometimes you just want to do them anyway, right? Like it adds character to your game and it shows you like you have like a little bit of a soul as like a developer, right? Because you want to put your like stamp on it. We did a couple things in our old games, like um, like Root has a, a funny example where there's a character who has just sad emoticons floating above his head, right? And he's staring directly at a wall, and his name's Sad Lenny. And it's just like that's a that's a tiny like one-off, but that was like kind of low effort and you know kind of funny too. Or another example is uh, the smoking skeleton in Denizen. Like, we don't we don't reuse uh, that like smoking animation anywhere. He's not like a reoccurring character. He's just like boom there and he's gone. Um, but you know the amount of like feel and vibe we got just from that character was worth it in my opinion. You know. I mean, it's some people's favorite part of the game, and personally, it's it's my favorite part of the game too. So, yeah, when you do a one-off, you gotta make sure it's uh, it's worth it. Otherwise, you're basically throwing money into the garbage. <coughs> I do really like the idea of uh, NPCs betting on a, a, a grub fight, though. That is very funny. Like I said, just, you know, keep those ideas coming, because chances are we will be able to use uh, one of them. And that's like... That's not even like a completely off the table thing, right? Because that's something we could probably reuse somewhere. Uh, Alright, I think I'm going to... Close this area out here and call it a night because it is. It's getting kind of late. It's crazy how a fast time goes when you're having fun making levels. Just change the material on these. Put it on there. 
Yeah, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about, uh, the overall level and feel and, ooh, lag, very weird. Yeah, you know, it's come along in three streams. This went from, like, nothing to a place with a decent amount of, like, breadth and everything to it. Yeah, it's, like, always... Always super super good to get feedback. So thanks everyone for hanging out. This has been super super fun. Uh, we're gonna do another one Tuesday and Thursday next week. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying out these new ideas for integrating different types of environments into this level. And uh, yeah, I I think uh, this is the start of something really cool here. Anyway. Thanks for hanging out. Great having you all. And I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>